Hello everybody, Queen Hydra here, and after much thoughts and deliberation, I've decided that we're gonna stick with doing it um, chapter by chapter because I feel like if I just all of a sudden do an entire summary on the book, that you guys are gonna miss out on a lot of the cool stuff that's in the book, and I don't know, I just feel like it's simpler and easier just to do it this way. Alright, okay, so. Last time we left off with Bilbo and the dwarves setting off into the forest. Now in chapter 8, Flies and Spiders, we're in the forest. And yeah, Flies and Spiders does sound like a play, but it's not. Not really. I mean, the spiders, if you want to call them play, you know, 100% go for it. I'm not going to argue with you there. Alright, um, let's see. Now once they're in the forest, they stumble upon a river. And if you remember in the last chapter, this is a river that was mentioned that they shouldn't drink. And everything is going fine. They're crossing the river and somehow... Bomber ends up falling into the river, and, you know, this must be made of, like, LSD or something, because he keeps falling asleep, and keeps having dreams about a big feast and everything, and the worst part about that is the dwarves have to carry him, and he is the biggest one of them. Like, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mind at all having to carry Bilbo through that, because he's so tiny, but Bomber is the biggest dwarf. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be too happy. Now, on top of this, there's also a creepy laughing that they keep hearing, and it's not like a goblin laugh or anything. It's a lot, and it sounds a lot more pleasant than that, but it's still kind of it's a little creepy and eerie, and it's definitely not comforting them one bit. Now, just when you think it couldn't get worse, they've run out of food and water, and Bomber keeps waking up just in time to talk about the feast that he sees in his dreams. Now, one night there's lights, and just as any dwarf apparently likes to do, they follow the lights. Which, you know, reading this book, I don't think I'm ever going to follow lights at uh, night again because I'll probably won't run into goblins or something like that. But in this case, thankfully it's not the goblins they run into, but it's the dwarves. Or, not the dwarves, we're both the dwarves. They run into the elves. Now the elves apparently aren't too happy with this because they capture Thorin for interrupting their feast. Because they're apparently really cranky or whatever. They capture Thorn for interrupting their feast. And once again, Bilbo ends up separated from the others. Now, he decides the best thing on earth to do is to fall asleep. Because it's dark, he's alone, so why not? And when he wakes up, he's in the legs of a spider getting wrapped in web. No, I don't know about you, but that's especially terrifying to me. Anyway, here he manages manages to slip his favorite ring onto his finger and gets away. With the ring, he's somehow able to understand what the spiders are saying and, and finds out that the dwarves are wrapped up in webs and trees. Bilbo at this point starts making fun of the spiders through lines such as You cannot trap me, though you're trying, when your cobwebs crazy. This is chapter 8, paragraph 97, by the way, if you were wondering, so you can go look at that in case you think I'm lying. Um, this like, really pisses the spiders off and they start chasing the voice. Once Bilbo has lured the spiders far enough, he sneaks back around and frees the dwarves, who, by the way, were poisoned 
as well as hanging upside down, so they weren't feeling too good. Now once it's again, Bobo has to lure the spiders out. And these are hideous creatures. But anyway. Once he gets back, he decides to show off his magic trick in the ring and the invisibility. Now, however astonished the dwarves are at this, they realize they're missing Soren. And like I said, he's been captured by the elves for interrupting a feast. Now, Soren at this point is really, really stubborn and refuses to tell the elven king why he's in the forest in the first place and what's bringing him to the forest and what his quest is. So he gets thrown into the dungeon. But not to worry because in chapter 9, Barrel of Bond, so do all the other dwarves. Now, with Dwarf Soren gone and without any food or water, when the Wood Elves find them, they just surrender easily without a fight. I can't say I blame them. Um, Bobo uses his ring to go undetected behind the crowd all the way to the halls of the Elven King. And apparently the King has a law about wandering aimlessly through the woods or whatever. And so all the dwarves get thrown in the dungeon as well until they decide to tell him why they are in the woods. And Bilbo at this point keeps thieving this place over and over again, day after day. In this, he manages to get word to Thorin that, let's see, the others have been imprisoned by the elves as well, but they are all doing okay. And he also learns of an alternative way out besides the front door. Now, um, he also learns of the water gate where the empty wine barrels are sent to Esgroth to be filled by men. Oh, Bilbo, Bilbo waits till night and frees the dwarves, telling them to climb into the barrels. In the morning, the elves drop off all the empty barrels into the water. And with Bilbo jumping in onto the last one, not into, mind you, onto. The water safely carries them toward Lake Down. That's a little down the way. And at some point, the elves fish the barrels into, onto a raft and row downstream. Now, this is going to be where chapter 9 ends, and the next chapter is called um, A Warm Welcome, but we're going to get to that next time. And, um, what was I going to say? If you guys want to throw ideas for songs up over here, or over here, feel free to do that because I've been looking for topics and I just really can't find one. I don't know what to write a song about or whatever. So go ahead and put your suggestions there. And if you like the video as always, then you can like subscribe, comment what you think about it, tell me what you think I could do better about it. Um, if you didn't like it, then you don't have to do any of those. But, I hope you guys are having a really, really great day, and continue to have a great day. So, bye-bye.